Hello everybody, I have a recipe to share with you today. This one is perfect for the fall, has so many root vegetables, and it's really delicious. Now I've got two versions of this. I've got a vegan and a non-vegan version, and you can check the description box below for a link to my website that has both recipes. So the first thing I'm doing is peeling and cutting up some ginger and garlic. Now I'm going to make my own ginger garlic paste, but you could buy this from the store pre-made, but I do like the flavor of the fresh garlic and ginger. So I'm using about equal parts of garlic and ginger and I'm going to use my Nutribullet to blend it with about one third of a cup of water and it blends very quickly. You just want to have it be nice and smooth. Now I'm going to end up using all of this today because I am doubling the recipe. I've got a friend over and I'm cooking for her but you can put as little or as much as you want. I'm also going to be using these jalapenos and you can omit this if you do not want it spicy and again I'm only going to use two but you can see here that I've got four and of course I keep all of my kitchen scraps for my compost bin and one onion for this recipe or more if you'd like this is a really forgiving recipe you can you can alter the proportions quite a bit and it still tastes delicious so I'm going to put quite a bit of oil at the bottom of my pan this is quite a large pan too and in goes the onion and you don't want to brown it too much you just want to get it a little bit translucent because it's going to cook thoroughly through once you get all the other ingredients and the water in there so I'm just sauteing that a little bit with the jalapeno and the onion and now I'm going to go ahead and put in the chicken. Now because I was splitting the recipe today, I went ahead and added some drumsticks and then half of a whole chicken that I went ahead and cut up on my own. I'm also adding one tablespoon of turmeric, but you can put less. Just turmeric is so healthy for you that I end up putting a little bit more than most recipes call for. And this is optional. You can add a little bit of saffron. It does taste delicious, but again, if you don't have that, you can leave it out. And then you're going to want to put enough salt for your liking. I put quite a bit because I'm not going to salt it later, and I'm going to have about six cups of water. I'm also going to add about three tablespoons of my garlic and ginger mix, but here you've only seen me add two. I'm going to add another one later on. And then I'm going to start out by adding two cups of water here, but over the course of this whole process, I'm going to end up putting about six cups of water. I'm also going to add a can of garbanzo beans, and if you want to make yours from scratch, you'll just want to give yourself an extra day to soak and to cook your garbanzo beans. And this recipe is perfect for the fall. It is so warming and this is a great opportunity to get in a lot of these fall vegetables. So I've got butternut squash today and you can add egg corn squash, you can even add pumpkin. So peeling acorn squash and butternut squash is kind of a chore, but my Martha Stewart peeler tends to work really well. So if you want to pick up one of your own, you can check the description box below because I really love that one. And for this recipe, you'll only need about half of this butternut squash, and I'm just keeping them in these really large pieces and adding it to the pot. As soon as I cut these vegetables, I go ahead and just add it to the pot. I'm also going to add half a head of this cabbage, and when I cut it, I want to make sure that I keep the base piece on so that the cabbage stays together. And if you'll notice, these pieces are still really big. We're not going to want to cut these up into very small pieces because as this recipe cooks it's you're you're gonna make all of these vegetables really soft and you don't want them to completely fall apart so you want to keep them quite large so that if they do end up falling apart they're still pretty chunky so to cut up this cauliflower I'm just going to break the pieces apart using my hand because again you want these pieces to be really large and again for this recipe I'm gonna use about half of the head of cauliflower the last thing I'm going to add is this yam, or maybe it's a sweet potato. I never really did learn the difference. And I kept those in pretty large chunks as well. Oh, I forgot, we've got some carrots as well. 
and I'm going to use about half a bag of carrots. And again, you can use as little or as much as you want. This is a great recipe to invite friends over because it just keeps growing and growing and it's so filling, so nourishing, really delicious. Now I forgot to mention that to make this recipe vegan, all you have to do is omit the chicken because this is a very flavorful dish and all of the vegetables and the garlic and the ginger and the turmeric add so much flavor that you're not even going to miss the chicken at all. All right, so you just wanna let that simmer for about 30 to 60 minutes. I did go ahead and add some more water, but originally the recipe does not call for this much water. So I just wanna let you know that if you wanna find the authentic Moroccan recipe, do check the description box below because I did get this recipe from a friend and I do add quite a bit more water than what the recipe calls for. So to make couscous, it's really easy. You just add a liquid, either broth or water, to your couscous. I made four cups of couscous and I added about five cups of liquid. And when it's all done, it's super delicious. And I'm showing you pictures here from my friend, Laura and Nora Dean, their couscous, because um, we ate ours too fast to have a picture of it. And a special thanks go out, goes out to Laura and Nora Dean for this recipe. And again, you can check the description box below for a link to my website. 